Grandma McAvey goes to sea. When Grandma McAvey needed a rest, she had a bad cold and a pain in her chest. She didn't sit lemon or take to her bed or stretch herself out on the couch. Instead, she loaded the car with nautical gear. A paratical parrot, some bottles of drink, a compass, a cut glass, a couple of pails, and the hammock that gra Grandpa had bought at sales. The strings she noticed were not very tight, so her bottom was sure to poke through the night. Then she gave a sly smile and did a wee jig. This could be the start of something big, she said as she plastered her nose with zinc. And what do you think? It was when Gram Grandma McGarvey rode out on the tide, she stood at the helm with the dog at her side, and she gazed at the compass and called to the crew, Ahoy there, me hearties. There's work we must do, all hands to the wheel. Let's give this a crack. But the dog looked as if he would rather turn back as he slunk from the deck and hid under the stair and the parrot turned surely and started to scream. So Grandma McGarvey trimmed all the sails, checked out the gigging, rigging and banged, banged in some nails. Then, high on the mast, she narrowed her eyes and she noticed the waves were beginning to rise and threatening clouds were starting to form. I hope we're not heading straight into a storm, she said as her heart began to sink. And what do you think? There you were. When Grandma McGarvey sailed into the squall, torrents of rain were beginning to fall, and waves reared up and came thundering down, while the parrot was shrieking, We're going to drown! And the dog was whimpering under the stair, and snails were straining and threatening to tear. Then the boat started pitching from starboard to port and the parrot, who wasn't a sea-firing sort, clung to her shoulder with squirks of alarm, turned terribly green and was sick down her arm. And the dog, whose eyes were bulging with shock, did something disgusting all over her sock. At least, said Grandma, stifling a curse, Things couldn't possibly get any worse, and she pinched her nose to block out the stink. But what do you think? They did when Grandma McGarvey opened her eyes. The waves had returned to a comfortable size. So she tidied the deck and straightened the snail sails and bailed out the boat with battered old pails. And when it was done, she muttered, At last, I think we can say that, da that the danger had passed. The 
think I can! shrieked the parrot and pointing its wing and gram grandma beheld the most terrible thing. Her knees began knocking, her eyes opened wide, a man-eating shark had loomed alongside. Its skin was all slimy, its eyes were blood red, and razor-sharp razor teeth flashed white in its head as it opened its mouth with a glut gluttonous screen, swooped on the deck and sunk its jaws in. Then Grandma shouted, We're not finished yet. I'll teach you a lesson you'll never forget. She grabbed the rail, reared up on her toes, and whacked the pail down her down hard on its nose. And before the shark could get itself free, Grandma McGarvey went down on one knee and wound the hammock around it tight, and its bottom stuck through as she thought that it might. Then Grandma McGarvey said with a smile, Now that should shut you up for a while. As she fastened the lock with a flourishing clink. And what do you think? It did. And when Grandma McGarvey had it for home, she soared on, to, on the waves and she flashed through the foam. And when she came within sight of the land, she could see on the jetty a gathering band. They were clapping and shouting and raising a cheer. The townsfolk, the councillors, even the mayor, so Grandma McGarvey, blew them a kiss. They'll probably give me a medal for this, she said, as she waved and slipped them a wink. And what do you think? They did. The end. Finish. Bye-bye.